most of us go through life asleep. Unconsciously reacting to whatever's in front of us. We're in jobs that aren't working for us, and we're in relationships that aren't working for us. They're sucking the life out of us. I want more for you guys. But you're going to have to be brave because you're going to have to face your fear. Tonight, I'm going to tell you about why we're coded in fear, my own journey through fear, and I'm going to give you some tools so you can work through your own fear. So when we're born, we're fearless, right? We're little kids. We're like jumping around. We're skipping. We're having fun. And then we're like these perfectly chiseled diamonds, each of us unique. So we have our own shape, and we're shiny. We're brilliant. And then we're told, you can't do that. You get a little smaller. You're supposed to do that. Don't think that way. Think this way. And our diamond becomes tarnished. We get pieces of it are not shining as brightly because we are taking upon other people's fears in our own. And then we're told, some of us are even told, what to study in college. So we totally lose sight of who we are, and our diamond is almost all the way covered. My story is pretty similar. I started off, had the kids, give them along. And then when I was in the fourth grade, I went up to give my first public speaking event, and I was blank. Enter my fear of public speaking. Tarnish on my diamond, my life getting smaller. And then I had a car accident in 2006. A month later, I was on that same road going down the I-5, and I relived that attack, that I relived that car accident in my head, and I had my first panic attack. Enter phobia, and enter not driving on a freeway for three and a half years. My life getting smaller, big tarnish on my diamond. The fear was piling up in my life from that day forward to the point where I started going to a psychiatrist. And he diagnosed me with generalized anxiety. He gave me clonopin, which numbed me out, which almost completely covered my diamond. So not only was I throwing clonopin on my diamond, I was throwing large quantities of alcohol on my diamond. My life was becoming really small. If this is the full experience of life, when you put stuff like that on, you start to numb out, you don't get the good stuff too. You can't selectively numb. Because my life was this big. And ultimately, five years ago, I was agoraphobic. I was up to here with fear. I could barely breathe. That means fear of leaving the house. My whole life, I'm swinging in fear. Now, no matter how tarnished you are with all that fear, part of your light always shines through. That is our spirit. So there was a little speck of light shining through when I was, when I was in that place. And that light had a voice. It said, I can't live like this. I will not live like this. And it was like I was catapulted. This diamond flew forward. And I took alcohol out of my life. And I took clonopin out of my life. I went to India and I learned how to meditate. I learned how to be okay with what was happening in my head. I joined Toastmasters and I started giving speeches and I worked through my fear of public speaking. And then when you start to do all of that, it's like your diamond starts to shine brighter and you start to realize who you are. That perfectly formed diamond starts to shine brighter. And for me, that was a career change. I became a life coach. I was a statistician before. Very different, but now I'm shining bright. And then recently I went to a trip to Bali and I decided to move to Bali. And I'm moving there next month because there I shine even the brightest. At least right now that's where I'm gonna go for. So, I really want you guys to shine bright like a diamond. There's a couple of tools you can have that I can give you in your toolkit today so you can do this. Number one, you've got to make a stake in courage. You've got to be willing to feel the fear and, and have courage be the most important thing. 
Because someone like me who's moving to Bali five years ago, I was afraid to leave the house. That's a big deal. I made courage my stake. That meant if I feel scared, I'm going to do it anyway. And your life starts to get bigger and bigger. And so not only make courage a stake in your life, but number two, feel your feelings. They're just feelings. They don't have to dictate your life. They can, and your life will shrink. Or you can be willing to feel them and keep moving anyways. The difference between courage and fear is action. Because courage is walking through fear. And that's what I'm inviting you guys to do tonight. So feeling your feelings. This is an example of how to do that. Everybody close your eyes. Bring your index finger and your thumb together. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And as you exhale, rub your fingers together and notice the sensation right there. Take another inhale through your nose. And bring your attention to your heartbeat. Take another inhale. Now pressing your index finger and your thumb together. See if you can feel your heartbeat. That's all you have to do. You have to bring your attention out of your head and into your body. The head, your head is where your fear lives. This is what is limiting your life, is up here. So if you can get out of your head, out of the future, because anxiety is trying to cope with the future. It's a projection of the mind. And the way that we experience that is physical sensations of our body. And we can continue that cycle, and we'll get worse and worse and worse. Or we can wake up to what's happening and just bring our head into our body, into the moment. And it will flow through us, the feeling. Just like a cloud. I mean, imagine trying to stop a cloud. It's insane, right? Because we know the nature of Earth is there's going to be storms that roll by. The nature of your body is there's going to be emotions that roll by. So instead of trying to resist them or mask them, I invite you to open yourself up to the full feelings of life and let them flow through you. One more thing that you guys can try. This is my God box. Now, if I just lost you on the G word, you can call it a spirit box, a universe box, a manifesting box, a letting go box, or your new anti-anxiety pill right here. What this is, is you write letters. If you're thinking about something too much, if you're stressed out about something, if you're anxious about something, if something's overwhelming, if you really want something, or you really don't want something, or it's an obsession, write it down. Dear God, take this. Dear universe, take this. This is what I want. Help me let go of the outcome. We're humans. We are not in the outcome business. And that's none of our business. We can just take the next action. And if we can let go of the future, we can have some peace. So if you practice this, now, some of you may be judging the fact that I have a God box. But I will tell you, five years ago when I was living down here, I didn't. And now, living up here, I do. So judge it. I invite you to try it. And then the last thing to do on your journey through fear is to meditate. When you meditate, you get more in touch with who you are. When you stop, get out of your head and get into the moment, you get clear on the shape of your diamond. And when you start to get clear on the shape of your diamond, you can start taking action based upon who you actually are. Not who you think you are or who you were told to be or who you were told not to be. So I really invite you guys to start getting clear on the shape of your diamond. If you want, you can come to my website, richerexperiences.com. I have free meditations waiting for you there to be my guest because I want all of you to shine bright like a diamond. Thank you.